London. Iran's President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is on the second day of his controversial visit to Lebanon. He's just finished addressing a rally in Bint Jabal in southern Lebanon. It's just a couple of miles from the border with Israel. The town was heavily damaged in the 2006 war between Israel and Hezbollah. Well, he's told the crowd that Iran will stand by those who fight in jihad and thanked the fighters who battled against Israel in that 34-day conflict. Well, the former Israeli ambassador to the UK, Yehuda Avner, joins me now from our central London studio. Good afternoon, sir. Um, what do you think the impact of this speech, of this visit by President Ahmadinejad will be? Well, I literally just come off the plane from Israel. I left Jerusalem this morning and I've come straight to your studios. And the impact of it, number one, there are no surprises in the sense that uh, we've always known that southern Lebanon, which is a Shiite uh, Hezbollah territory, is an extension of Iran. And the uh, visit of uh, President Ahmadinejad is a very vivid illustration of this. And this is uh, the manner in which it is perceived in Israel. How provocative do the Israeli authorities view it? Immensely so. Uh, it is uh, a, a, a most evocative and vivid demonstration of the extension of the Iranian power, not only to southern Lebanon, but to Lebanon as a body politic itself. And within Lebanon, there are uh, serious pockets of great unhappiness at the destabilization effects this will have, giving extra credibility, influence, power, and perhaps troublemaking on the part of Hezbollah. Destabilizing as well for the Lebanese government? Indeed so. The Lebanon is a composite of uh, different uh, religious ethnic groups. Uh, of, you've got the Shiites in the south, you've got the Sunnis in the north, you've got the Druze in the Shuf Mountains, and Lebanon has had an unhappy history of civil war over many years. Uh, it has been under Syrian tutelage, and now of The coercion Beirut. Does what what does Ahmadinejad's visit do to Hezbollah supporters? Does it give them greater confidence? Will it mean that they pose more of a threat to Israel? Uh, I can imagine that uh, there is ecstasy in the Hezbollah uh, quarters today. Um, not only have they been receiving Iranian arms over many years, despite the fact that the United Nations is there to make sure, allegedly, that the south of Lebanon uh, remained disarmed. Uh, they have now more rockets pointed at Israel than they've ever had in the past. And now they have been given this, this blend of political and religious and strategic and uh, military vindication, uh, which also uh, extends towards the central government of Lebanon and is causing great trepidation within the non-Shiite Islamic elements in Beirut. Um, we, we've heard Hillary Clinton, Secretary of State, uh, and the international community indeed warning against destabilizing Lebanon. Is it viewed within Israel that the international community, the American partners, are doing enough? Are those sorts of words enough? Well, this is the Middle East, and uh, the attempts have been made over many decades uh, to try and graft onto the Middle East certain uh, of Western values and cultures and so forth. With your permission, I'm holding in my hand a book called The Prime Ministers. I served as an advisor to four of our Israeli prime ministers over the years, beginning shortly after the establishment of the state in 1948. And there is, in this book, which I'm in this country to launch on behalf of the Zionist Federation, there is a, a, a thread that runs right through it, in which the 
the the the, the very subtle balances within Lebanon are very very easily uh, shaken, disturbed, and erupt again and again into violence. Uh, uh, Apologies. Very interesting to talk to you, Yehuda Avner. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Straight off the plane. Thank you.